Hi guys, and welcome to the second video, the first official how-to for Organized Adult. So today I'm going to be talking about how to file your taxes as a young person, probably someone 25 and younger, maybe a little bit older if you don't have a job that you're making a ton of money at, or uh, maybe like while your parents are still claiming you as a dependent. Um, after that it can get a little bit more complicated, but I'm going to basically teach you the basics about how to file taxes and by the end of this video you're going to be a lot less confused about taxes and you're going to actually understand what all of these terms and all these forms mean. Okay guys, and one thing that I forgot to mention, and I apologize if the audio is a little bit lower quality because I'm um, not on my camera anymore, I'm on my computer, but one thing that I forgot to mention is that I put together what I think is a pretty good cheat sheet having to do with this video. And as you can see, it's um, the Organized Adult Taxes Cheat Sheet. And basically what this um, document is going to do is it gonna, it's going to outline everything that I talk about even more simply and in an even more organized way. Um, so if you want to go ahead and go to um, my website, organizedadult.com, um, the specific post will be uh, linked below. And you can go ahead and download this cheat sheet for free and print it out. And um, you can have it right next to you while you're watching this video, just in case you want to um, read along or take notes. There is a section at the bottom um, for you to take notes on anything that I say or anything that I point out that you might not have known beforehand or that you just want to remember. So that's just a little heads up in case you want to go over and get that free printable from organizedadult.com. I promise, because I had to learn it, and this is the only way that I know how to do it in a way that's organized and simple. So basically, taxes need to be filed every year by April 15th. And that includes not only sending in the forms, whether that's by mail, they have to be postmarked by April 15th, or um, online. And we'll talk about that, that when I talk about the online software that I like to use. Um, and this is not a sponsored video in any way um, when I talk about the things that I like to use. So basically, um, when you start a job, and this is a job for, this isn't like babysitting or a job that wouldn't require, that um, you wouldn't be making an amount of money at that um, would be taxed or that would be recorded by the government. Like if you're getting paid under the table for a job, then you wouldn't fill out this form. But for like a normal job at a normal company, when you start that job, you're going to have to fill out two forms. And they should have you fill out this either your first day of work or when you apply or right at the beginning. So the first form that you're going to fill out is called a W-4 and the second form that you're going to fill out is a payment form. So a W-4 looks like this and I'm going to do close-ups of these so don't worry if you can't read it or something like that. And basically a W-4 is telling um, the IRS how, that you want money taken out of your check for taxes and so basically when you um, label yourself as being single and only having one job, you would put, um, so the first line says enter one for yourself if no one else can claim you as a dependent. So basically you would put zero for line A and then in line B you would put number one because most of us are single and only have one job. Again, I'll show you guys all this in close-ups. But basically what a W-4 is, is it's telling you that you want your employer and the IRS to withhold money from your account. So this is what initially goes into the IRS saying, yes, take money out of my account, and they have their own table with their own calculations that they use to do that. And then when you file taxes in January, you're basically just comparing what actually got taken out versus what should have been taken out. So when you go to fill out this form, you're going to need your social security number and obviously your address and you should know whether you're singled or married or all that stuff. Um, you can choose to have additional money taken out of your check on top of taxes if you wanted to get that money back in April. Um, it might be like a way to save money. It might be like a budgeting technique that you might want to use. I personally don't do that. Um, I don't know a ton of people that do that, do that but it's definitely an option. Um, yeah, so that's the W-4. And there is a whole worksheet on the back of the W-4 that your employer is going to give you that explains this in further detail. But basically, I'm going to go through it line by line with you guys so that when the paper gets put in front of you, you actually know what to do. 
Okay, guys, so this is the W-4 that I just talked about. And this is the form, like I said, that you're going to get um, on your first day of work or um, maybe when you interview or something like that uh, very soon, you know, before you start your job. So basically on this, the top is a personal allowance worksheet where you can kind of figure out what you should be putting down here on the employer's employees withholding allowance certificate. So basically at the top, line A, enter one for yourself if no one can claim you as a dependent. Um, my parents still claim me as a dependent. I'm assuming most people, especially if you're in college, you're still going to be claimed by your, um, you're still going to be claimed as a dependent by your um, parents. So basically I would enter nothing there. And then enter one if you are single and have only one job, married, have one job, your, sp your spouse does not work, or your wages from a second job, or your spouse's wages are 1500 or less. So I'm going to enter one because I'm single and only have one job. Enter one for your spouse. I don't have a spouse. Um, enter one if you file as head of household. No. Enter one if you have at least... $2,000 worth of child or dependent care expenses. Uh, no. Oh, um, I'm sorry. On line D, it was enter the number of dependents other than your spouse and yourself. So I don't have any dependents. I don't have any child dependents. Um, and I'm not the head of household. I don't have any child tax credits. And so add lines A through G together. So basically my total is just one. Okay, so now down to the part that this is, so this bottom part your employer is never gonna see. This is just so that you can figure out what your total is, and in this case my total is one. So down here at the bottom is where you're gonna actually be filling these things out. So you're gonna put your first and middle, your first name and your middle initial, your last name, and then your social security number, like I said, you need to know that number. I know that I don't know mine all the time. Um, sometimes I write it down a little sticky and bring it with me. I know that's probably not the safest thing, so I know that I should memorize it, but I mean, maybe some of you have it memorized. I don't. So I'll just write it down a little sticky or put it in my phone or something and then just delete it right after I fill this form out. Your home address, um, if you're single, married, or married but withhold uh, at a higher single rate so I would just check single um, your city state zip code if your last name differs from your social security card you should check there that's probably like if you're married or something like that so then line five is total number of allowances you are claiming so basically I just take that number from line H and I would put it there so I'm filing one Additional amount, if any, you want held from each paycheck. I never put anything on this amount. And, okay, so if last year you didn't make enough money to have any um, money withheld, which happens sometimes, especially with, pe sometimes, especially with people our age, then um, you would write exempt. Or if this year you expect a refund of all. I wouldn't write exempt on this line unless you are absolutely 100% sure because personally, I would rather get money taken out now and then get it all back in April than have to owe the IRS anything. So I would think before writing exempt on this line, of course it's up to you, but I would just think. And then you're just going to sign it and write the date and then your employer is going to sign it and write the date and write their office code and their ID number and they're going to mail it into the IRS. Okay, so we just went through the W-4, and so the other form that you're going to fill out your first day or very soon after um, at your job is a payment form, and basically this is just telling your employer how you want to get paid. So either that's by a check in the mail or a d or direct deposit, and um, if it's a check in the mail, you just fill it out, say check in the mail, give them your address, etc., if it's direct deposit, meaning the money automatically goes into your account um, electronically, then you're going to want to bring in a blank check. Um, you do need a check. I know a lot of us don't carry checks anymore, but you need to bring in a blank check. And at the bottom, 
it's going to say your bank's like routing number and your account number, and that's how your employer is going to know where to send the money to. So that's just something to keep in mind that if you're going to do direct deposit, 99% of the time companies require you to bring in a check and, and they'll usually staple it to your direct deposit form and then they'll just like X through it, avoid it so that no one can steal money from you. So I hope that's clear as far as the W-4 and the payment form that you're going to fill out when you first begin a job. Okay, so the next step, after you filled those things out, you've been working at your job, let's say you fill that out in June. Let's say you start a summer job in June and you fill out your W-4 and your payment form. So when January rolls around, the beginning of this year, and I'm filming this in January and it's going to go up in January, so sometime this month, if you're someone that works at a company that you filled out a W-4 at and that you're someone that gets taxes taken out, in the mail from your company, you're going to get what's called a W-2. Now, this is not what a W-2 looks like. This is the format of it, but I found this online just as an example, and I blew it up into a bigger size so that um, when I do the overhead, I can show you guys more clearly. But it's going, the format and the lines are all standard as far as the, like, like wages, tips, other compensation, like every W-2 is going to say those words and then have a number next to it. So although it might not look exactly like this when you get it in the mail, this part of the form is going to look the, like that. So what a W-2 is, is it basically provides all of the information that you need when you go to file your taxes. That is, when you go to report to the government how much you actually made that year. And when I say year, I mean January to December. So even though you only started that um, job in, what did I say, June or July, sometime in the summertime, you're only reporting to them the money you made for that year. So right now it's 2016. When I go to file my taxes before April 15th, I'm filing them for year 2015, January 2015 to December 2015. I'm not including any money that I made in 2016. I'll do that next year. So basically this... Um, W-2 is going to include all of the information that you need when we go to use the tax filing software um, and it tells you how much you made, how much tax was taken out, um, your employer's information that you're going to need, all that stuff. So let's go over the W-2 line by line. Okay, so now this is the W-2, and not the whole thing fits in the frame, but this is the W-2 that you'll get in January or the beginning of the year, close to that date. Um, from your employer slash the IRS. So this contains all the information that you need to file your taxes um, before January 15th. So like I said, this isn't actually what it looks like. It's not a full page like this, but I blew it up so that I could show you guys. Um, it'll probably just come in an envelope, be envelope sized. And also this is not my information. This is a fake um, W-2 example. The guy's name is John Madden. He lives in California. As you can see, he didn't make that much money for the year, but whatever, it still works um, in the, for this case. So this is your employee's social security number. You're gonna need this when you use H&R Block to file your taxes. Um, if you didn't already know your social security number, this should be yours. Um, this is your employer ID number. You're also gonna need this. This is all of your employer's information, like the official name, the official address, all that stuff. Um, this is going to be all your information, your official name, your official address, all that. And then we're going to go over to this side, which actually contains the relevant information that you might not know off the top of your head. So number one, this number is going to have all of the money that you made for this year. Wages, tips, other compensation. This is all the reported money that you made this year. Then number two is the how much federal income tax was withheld. So when they say federal income tax, this is taxes that go directly to the federal government. They use for what they want. This is the amount that was taken out. It's already been taken out. This is the amount that was taken out of your paycheck in taxes. Number three is social security wages. So this is how much money that you made that social security took into account. This isn't the amount that social security took out in tax. That's this number. This is just how much social security is recognizing that you made this year. It should be the same as your number one um, 
income. So number four is social security tax withheld. This is the amount from this past year that you are contributing to social security. As you can see, it's different than your federal income tax. Um, it's separate from that. So this is the money that is spent on government programs. Um, so that's the amount that John Madden got taken out for, um, we'll say 2015, even though at the bottom it says 2008, we'll just pretend it was 2015. Medicare wages and tips, again, the amount of money that you made this year that is being recognized by Medicare should be the same as the other two. Uh, Medicare tax withheld. So this is the amount of money that was taken out for the free public health insurance that the United States provides. Um, and in this case, it was $11.15, again, because John Madden only made $800 this year. Um, and then Social Security tips, allocated tips, advanced EIC payment, dependent care benefits, non-qualified plans, etc. Um, most of that stuff isn't going to apply to um, people our age. And I would say that if you have something in these boxes, definitely Google it or ask someone because um, I feel like these things aren't things that, you know, 20-somethings should have on their W-2s. And then, okay, so in box 14, other, um, this is, this varies by state. So John Madden is from San Jose, California, and he has a special state tax that, is, that was taken out called the Calif California uh, Disability State Tax, and the amount was $6.15. So if there's any special taxes taken out, um, it'll be in this box, and you do need to report that when you're filing your taxes. And then at the bottom is going to be your state um, taxes that were taken out. I apologize. I have a stuffy nose if you guys can hear that. But um, again, the state that you live in, your employer's state ID number, um, the amount of state wages, tips, and et cetera that the state recognizes, again, should be the same as all of these other amounts. And this is the amount that was taken out of your um, paychecks this past year in state income tax. Again, kind of low because John Madden only made 769 bucks this year. So that's basically the W-2. And again, this lays out all the information that you need when you go to file your, um, when you go to file your taxes before April 15th. And we'll see how this applies when we go to the H&R Block website. Okay, so now that we understand what a W-4 is and what a W-2 is, the two biggest things that you need as far as filing taxes, now we're going to go into the actual steps of actually filing your taxes before April 15th um, of the, of, so 2016 before April 15th, 2016 for tax year 2015. So there are a lot of free services out there that make it a hundred times easier than the forms that I've seen as far as how to file your taxes. There are standard forms provided by the IRS. Um, this is one of them, it's called the um, 1040 Easy that you may have heard of. And you can go through this and you can try to file, just fill out this form. You can do it online on their website. Um, and if you know all this information and you're super clear about how much money you made, how much should be taken out, stuff like that, then by all means use this form. But just to be 100% certain so that I don't owe money or so that I don't make a mistake, I like to use a free service called um, the H&R Block Free Filing Tool. And again, this isn't a sponsored video or anything. It's just something that I use. And what I like about it is that it makes it super simple to file your taxes because I don't know about you, but all those, for all those names of those forms and the you know, wording that is sometimes used on these forms is kind of confusing. And the way that the H&R Block free filing tool works is that it will just ask you questions and you just answer those questions and then at the end, it'll give you your form all correctly. And it also has um, a tool where it'll like catch mistakes that are commonly made, which I really like, which, you know, if I was doing this pen and paper, I wouldn't catch those mistakes that I made myself. So basically it... Um, is a tool that you, it'll just ask you questions and you'll just answer the questions like how much money did you make this year and when you do that you're gonna you know look at your w2 and it's gonna say wages tips and other compensation 
and you know, this person made $800 this year. Not a lot, but I made $800. So you automatically know that answer, and so you just put it in. And it'll go through line by line and just ask you really simple questions that I think are pretty easy to understand. And at the end, for free, you can export that information directly to the IRS and you receive your um, the money that you're, own, that you're owed either immediately or a couple days after that. So I'm going to go through the um, H&R Block free filing tool with you guys a little bit right now. Okay, guys, so... Let me just close this. Okay, so this is the H&R Block free filing tool, um, the free file, free tax filing tool. And I'm not going to go through this whole thing with you guys because, frankly, I feel like it would be a waste of time because it really is that easy to use that, like I said, as soon as you press start my taxes, it's literally just going to ask you, how much money did you make this year? How much got taken out? It's literally just going to go through federal questions and then... So when I went through the W-2, I showed you guys all, where all that information is laid out, how all of those numbers are labeled, like um, box one, box two, box three, box four. This is literally just going to go through that amount. It's going to go through all your federal information, your state information, and then at the end, you're going to be able to file for free directly to the IRS. Um, and also, what's really nice about this site here is that over here, once you're done entering all of your... Um, over here, once you're done entering all of your payment information and how much you made and how much you paid, etc., it's going to tell you exactly how much you get back. Like, you don't have to do any of the calculations yourself. It's going to tell you exactly how much you're going to get back as soon as you file. And if you do it electronically, you're going to get it right after you file, um, direct deposit into your account. If you do it over a check, it's going to take, I think, like 10 to 12 business days. So it's really nice. And as you can see, this is completely free, free edition. You can sign up for um, more um, expensive versions that have a couple more fe features. But honestly, I think this is perfectly fine for people our age that just need a basic tax filing system and they don't want to deal with the forms, you don't understand the forms. This is honestly, in my opinion, the best way to do it. Again, not sponsored. I just really like this tool. So again, it's taxes.hnrblock.com. Or you can just go ahead and Google H&R Block free tax filing tool and it'll bring you right to this page. And you do have to create an account eventually just because it's going to save your information for a year, which I think is really nice so that you don't have to enter like your address and stuff year after year. But um, so you're going to have to create an account just with like your email address and a password. So you can either do that in the beginning or um, you can do that like in the middle. It'll ask you again because you, you can start like without having to create an account. So I just think this is a really great option for people our age that don't need a super complicated tax filing system. And again, super easy to use. Okay, guys, so I hope that this was helpful. I hope that this makes taxes a little bit easier to understand, especially as a young person. It might be your first time filing them on your own. And you just might not know what's actually going on. And I hope that this video was informative. And I hope I presented it in an organized way. Because you know, filing taxes is an adult thing that you have to do, and it's really important to get it right so that, you know, as the years goes on, as I've shown you, this information is going to compound, and if you, you know, keep it in one place, you'll have, to, and you do it right every year, you're going to have less issues going forward as you start to make more money, as your income starts to get a little bit more complicated from different sources and stuff like that. So I feel like as young people, if we get a base understanding of how to do taxes, like I've shown you today, um, in a simple, easy, organized way, it's definitely going to help us in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it was helpful. Thanks, guys. Bye.